here's an egg. Yes. And you're right, it's delicate. Eggs are designed by nature to be broken open by a chick. Yes. Chicks are not very strong. Hold out your right hand. Now, if you just wrap your fingers around it, gently. Yeah. Now crush it. No, Smash I'll, it. Go I'll on. get egg all over my trousers. We'll get you new trousers. Go on, crush it. You're I a, can't break a big it. Star. Go on. I can't Put some break effort it. into it. I've never tried that in my life, and I'm astonished. Why? It's an arch in all directions. Arches are very strong. They're a very efficient way of using material. So if you have uniform pressures from the outside in this, it's incredibly strong. <laughs> So, come on, what have you got here? Well, one of the teams is planning to produce an aircraft of some type. So we're going to demonstrate their biggest problem, and that's control. <laughs> when the wing's moving through the air like this, the first two rows of ribbons show a nice, smooth, flat flow over the leading edge. If the angle's too flat, it won't keep them up. And if the angle's too steep, they're going to stall. At that point, we're not flying, we're crashing. Welcome to a special celebrity edition of Eggheads. And tackling our awesome quiz geniuses today, our science friction. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Dr Ian Johnson, engineer, TV presenter, and academic consultant for Bangor's The Theory. The Great Bear Lake is the largest freshwater lake entirely within which country? Greenland, Canada, or Russia? What do you think? <sighs> Greenland's too cold. I mean, the biggest lake in Greenland's probably a puddle. And we probably don't know. The, large, the biggest freshwater lake in Russia is like Baikal, isn't it? I, I, so think, I think Canada. Canada. I, 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 it's gut reaction, but that's... Yes. Yeah, OK. We are confidently hesitant about <laughs> suggesting the possibility of Canada. And uh, Kate's gut instinct worked well for you in those head-to-heads. It's worked again. Oh, Canada. Yes. Some of the structure isn't looking terribly strong at the moment. So, for example, they've got a very, very flimsy-looking nose cone. Now, at top speed, that thing's going to be going probably well over 200 miles an hour. If it buckles off to one side, gets asymmetrical, forces the nose around, it's like having a rudder in the front of the thing, and <laughs> bang. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> to illustrate one of the main problems the rocket team faces, we've set up a demo. The big difference between the team's rocket and what we've built is control. We're on board our rocket so we can continually adjust the thrust. Even then, it's not easy. Uh, it's up to you. Let's you're, go. You're... Okay, I'm going to go scientifically and use the scientific technique known as a Monte Carlo simulation here. Okay. I'm going to make a wild guess at random and say Queen's. Why is it a Monte Carlo simulation? It's a scientific technique. If you want to test lots of options, you guess them at random so that you don't bias yourself. Yeah, by, yeah. You know, to, if you look at every second one, you might miss an effect which applies to the others. So you choose them at random. So this is a Monte Carlo <laughs> wild guess of Queens, which I want to stress is based on no knowledge whatsoever and has a two to one chance of being wrong. So it wasn't my fault. <laughs> I think you might be pretty good if you did end up in Monte Carlo. Ooh. What's that? That's a flare. There it is. You can see a clear drift. You see it and it's hit something. It's been pushed away from the edge. It moved sideways. Every change there is a thermal roll coming up the cliff face. That would not be a nice place to fly anything. Oh, whoa, 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 Well, it's been tested. I don't understand how that's going to fly. I wouldn't say no chance. No chance. We've got to check any exposures on that wire. Mm -hmm. I got Here's an egg. 